Hi guys and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to teach you how you can create C++ user interface application and connect it to a database so that you can read and write data from that database. For that we are going to use Interbase DB that is going to be our database and then for building user interface applications we are going to use C++ Builder. The links to download these two are going to be in the description so if you're not familiar with either one of these two make sure to watch these two videos. So the first one is going to teach you how you can install and set up Interbase DB as well as how you can write your first SQL queries. And then the second one is going to teach you how you can build user interface applications with C++. And after you watch these two videos, you should be able to follow this tutorial without any problems. So with that being said, now I'm going to show you the application that we are going to build in this video. So here is the application that we are going to build. It's university app that contains the list of all the students. For now, we have only two students that I have um, inserted into my database. So this data is read from the database and we have Salina Nurak and Elon Musk. So let's now see how we can add more records, more students. So just click on this plus symbol and here you need to specify the ID of the student and then name, let's say Bill Gates and then grade is going to be six because from what I've heard, he wasn't such a great student. <laughs> okay, and then age is 60 and confirm this transaction, okay. And then let's also change some data. Let's say Elon Musk like this and confirm that. And I'm going to delete myself. It hurts, but I am going to do it. Okay, so delete record, yes. So now if I stop this application and then run it again, we should be able to see these changes. And as you can see, indeed, these changes have been stored in the database. So now that I started my application, now they have been read again. So now I have only two students and I am not a student anymore. Okay, so how are we going to approach building this application? Well, the first step is going to be to create a database for this app. So here I have opened Interbase Console, so make sure to open your IB console. And if you don't have it, if you don't know how to install or set up Interbase, make sure to watch this video. It will be linked here and also in the description. So let's create our database. Here I have my local server and then here should be the list of databases. I don't have any at the moment. So I'm going to right click on databases and then create database. So here I'm going to specify the name for my database. And here I will select the location for my database. Documents folder is okay, so I will say university db like this and click save and that is all that we need to do for now. So I'm going to click okay and here is asking for username and password. Let me check what is the default password for Interbase very quickly and I'm going to put it on the screen. Okay, so on the screen you can see default username and password, master key and click connect and oh it says unable to connect to requested host now the problem is that our server is not running so make sure to start your interbase manager here i have it and you need to start the server here okay and then i'm going to close this error and if i try to connect to my database again now you should see this little green check mark and that means that you successfully connected to your database. So after we have done this, let's create the table where we are going to store our students. So let's write an SQL query. So you can click here on this little SQL icon and it is going to open a window like this one where you can write SQL queries. Okay, so here we are going to write SQL code in order to create students table. So I'm going to paste the query and I'm also going to leave it in the description so that you can copy it and paste it in your program. And then if you want a separate SQL course, let me know in the comments, give this video a thumbs up so that I know and I'm going to create a separate entire course related to SQL only. So here is our SQL code to create a students table. So you say create table and then you put the name for your table which is students and then inside these parentheses like this you put all of the attributes and at the end you need to put this semicolon sign so 
these are the attributes of student. So here you can see that every student has ID, name, grade, age, and then here is something called primary key. So let's explain these very quickly. So name is of type var char 30. This means that name is a string that has 30 characters, that is max limit. And then you can put here 50 or 80 or 100 if you need more characters. And then this name should not be null. Okay, and then grade is of type integer and it also must not be null. Age is of type int and also it should not be null. And then this ID here, it is also of type int. It will not be null and it is also specified as primary key. Now, what this part here means is that ID is going to be a unique way to identify every single student. So there cannot be two students that have the same ID and we are going to use that ID as a primary key for every student. Okay, so here is SQL code in order to create students table and I will leave this code in the description of the video or I will pin it in the comments so that you can use it and please make sure that you type everything correctly because the code that you write here, SQL code, the errors that you make are much harder to fix and find than the errors in C++ code or any other programming language, especially if you are a beginner. Okay, um, another very important thing is that SQL language is not case sensitive, which means that you can also say here, create with capital letters. It is going to work the same, but please make sure to pick either lowercase or uppercase and then be consistent with that. So I'm going to use lowercase. I'll say create with lowercase letters like this. So how can I execute this query? Well, you select the query that you want to execute and then you click on this thunder icon, which says execute query, or you press F5 on your keyboard and this query has been executed. Now, we should see this table created here on these tables and views, but it didn't appear. I don't know why is that, but in order to refresh it, I'm just going to close this very quickly and then I'm going to open it again and it is refreshed. And here is our students table and all the fields that we created. Now, there is probably a more sophisticated way in order to fix this refreshing problem. Uh, but if you're lazy like me, just close it and open it again. Okay, so the next step is to add a few records into our students table. So let's do that. Let's say insert into students. And then here I'm going to specify all the fields of students table. So ID, name, grade, and age. And then here I will specify the values. Okay, so ID is going to be one. And then name, I'm going to put it inside quotation marks, single quotation marks, because it is a string. So let's say that the name will be Saldina Norak. Okay, that's my name. And then grade will be 9.5. That was my grade actually um, after finishing university. And then age is 27. Okay, so in order to execute this query, again, I'm going to select it and I will press F5 on my keyboard. And here we get an error. Now, attempt, attempted updates during read-only transaction. Now, if you get an error like this one, let me show you how you can fix it. So click here on transactions and then options. And here you need to set write as access mode and click OK. And OK here as well. So if I try to execute this insert command again. Now we should get a message like this one. Okay, and in order to commit this trans transaction that we just made, go to transactions and commit or press F9 on your keyboard. Okay, great. So with this, we have successfully added one record into our students database. So let's check that. Let's say select all from students. Okay, and let's execute this command here. And here we get every record from our students database. And you can, as you can see, we have only one for now. Okay, and here is the grade 10. Now, why is that the case? Let me know in the comments, please, before you listen to my answer. So why do we have a grade of 10 here? And here we have specified 9.5. So the answer is because we said that 
grade is going to be of type int. So it is rounding this float type 9.5 to an integer number, which is 10 in this situation. So that is the reason. Okay, now let's add another student. Let's say here, for example, Elon Musk. Okay, and I'm going to put eight, and then he is, I believe, around 50 years old. Okay, so let's execute this, press F5. Okay, and now we get an error, very important error, which says violation of primary or unique key constraint on table students. Now, this error here means that we are trying to add a record into our students table that has the same primary key that already exists inside our students table. So that is because if I select everything from students, you can see that this ID of one already exists for student Saldina Norak. So in this situation, we need to change the ID as well for the second student. So I'm going to change it to two, and now I'm going to execute the query again. And now if I, no, first I need to commit the transaction. Okay, and then I need to select everything from students. And as you can see, here we have the second record. So that is how you can insert data into the database and read from the database using the IB console. And now we are going to create C++ application and connect to this database in order to read and write the data from our C++ app. So here I have opened C++ Builder. So let's create a new multi-device application with C++. It's going to be blank application, click OK. And now it is creating our project. Let's wait a couple of seconds. So here is our blank application. Now, before we start building this uh, C++ app and connecting it to database, there are some prerequisites, some basic knowledge that you need to have in order to be able to connect a C++ app with a database. So let's look at these tabs here. So projects, data explorer, and then multi-device preview. I want to focus on this second data explorer, at least for now. So I'm going to open it. And if you look inside, you will notice that here we have FireDAC and DB Express. So what I want to talk about is this FireDAC part. So what is FireDAC? It is a data access helper. So it contains many different tools that are going to help us to connect to our database and to read the data, write the data, execute queries, and things like that. So if I open this Fire Deck, you will notice that here we have many different databases. And the one that I'm going to use is called Interbase. It is here. So if I open Interbase, here you get something called employee. Now, before you do anything, please don't delete this because we are going to need it. So this employee here, this is actually a connection to our database. So we are going to use this in order to connect to our database. So how can you connect to the database that we just created? So right click on this employee and click on modify. Okay, and here you need to select the database. Okay, and I'm going to select this one, University DB, that we just created a couple of minutes ago, and click Open. Okay, here is your username, password, protocol is TCP IP. I'm going to change it to local because that is the default one. Okay, and everything else I'm going to leave it as already is. So I'm going to click on OK. And now you should be able to connect to your employee database. But if you're experiencing a problem and if you're not able to see the tables from your database, one thing that I'm going to give you as a tip is to right click on your employee again, click on modify. And then here for server, you are going to put the text that I'm going to put on the screen here. So put localhost backslash gds underscore db. If it is not working without this, please try this um, quick fix. I'm going to delete it because for me it is working without it. And click OK. And now you should be able to see your student table that you created for this database. Also, please make sure that your Interbase server is running. So open your Interbase manager and make sure that your server is not stopped. That is an important part as well. So with that, we have successfully connected to our database. And now we can start working with the data inside this student's table that we created. Now, this part is going to be very easy. That is why I love 
C++ Builder so much. So just to drag and drop your connection, this employee connection to your application and then go on this object inspector. So select your connection, go on object inspector and click connected to true. Okay, so you need to uh, set your connected state to true. That is going to be the first step. And then the second step is you need to drag and drop the table that you want to work with. We have only one table for now. That is our students table. So I'm going to drop it on my application here. And I also need to change its active state to true. And then let's see how we are going to show the data from this students table. So I'm going to use a grid. I will say T string grid. Okay, and I will just drag and drop this control to my application and just make it a little bit bigger here. Okay, so how can you connect this grid in order to show the data from your students table? It's actually very easy. So right click on this grid and click on this bind visually. And here you should see this live bindings designer. So here is your students table and here is your string grid. And in order to bind these two, you just need to do this. Okay, it's actually very easy and immediately you get this live binding preview of the data from your students table, as you can see here. And if I run my application, let's see, I should be able to see the data from my table. Why is it taking so long? Okay, so here is the table and here is the data from that table. Salina, Elon Musk. Okay. <laughs> Now, another thing that I promised to show you is how you can add new data, delete existing data, or edit it through your C++ application. So in order to do that, there is another command that is used for that. It's called navigator. So I'm going to look for it here. Okay, it's tbind navigator. I am going to put it here and just make it a little bit bigger like this. Um, okay. And how am I going to connect this navigator so that it knows that it should work with this with this student's table? Well, again, you need to right click on your navigator and click, oh, where is it? So right click on it and click on bind visually and you will get a window like this one. And again, just drag and drop this here like this and all done. So if I start the program now, let's see what's going to happen. Why is it taking so long? Okay, so here is my application. And then if I want to add a new record, click on this plus symbol and then put here three. And then let's say bill dates and then grade is going to be six. I've heard that he wasn't such a great student at university. So let's give him a six. Okay, and then I think that he's around 60 years old. And in order to confirm this transaction, click on this check mark here and that is it. So if I close this application and then open it again, as you can see, we have three students, Salina, Elon and Bill Gates. So we have permanently saved our data to our database. So it doesn't matter if you close your application, turn off your PC, this data is going to be saved into your database. And then if you want to delete a record, let's delete Bill Gates. He was a college dropout after all. So let's delete him, delete record. Okay. And then if I close the application, start it again, as you can see, again, we have only two students. And then if you want to change something, just click on the field that you want to change. Let's say Elon Musk. Okay. And then commit this transaction like this and this should be stored in the database. So let's check it through the database. Let's open our IB console. And then if I say select all from students and press F5, as you can see, now we have Elon Musk. <laughs> okay, so I believe that is enough for this video. I will leave all the links and the code from this video in the description, or I will pin it in the comment. Make sure to check both. And I will also link some additional resources like books and courses that I like in case that you want to learn more. So if you enjoyed this video and if you want more videos like this one, make sure to give this video a thumbs up so that I know, uh, or let me know in the comments if you want an SQL dedicated course. So an entire course dedicated only to SQL. Uh, so, Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in some other video. Bye.